All right then, gang. So in this lesson, I want to talk about derived values, which is another way of saying computed values. And derived values are basically values that depend on other signals. For example, I've got a signal here which is storing a count, and that's going to increase by one every time I click on this button. Now, I'm also outputting the double of whatever the count currently is right here, and this is what's known as a derived value because it's derived from some other signal value. It depends on it. And the way we create these derived values is by wrapping them in a function. And because we use the count signal inside this function, Solid knows to rerun this when the count changes to update the return value of this double function. And therefore, we see that update over here as the count updates. So derived values are just functions that return a value that depend on the value of other signals. And also, you can have derived values which use store values as well. And the principle is exactly the same. We just make a function that returns a value based on some other store property value. So that's the basics of derived values. Now let's put this into action. Okay, so back in our project, what I'd like to do is show how many items are currently in the cart. Now, if we think about it, we're not actually storing that number explicitly anywhere because if we go to our context, then it's just an array of products. Now each product has a quantity property so we can add all those up, which is what we're gonna do, but there's no actual value directly that we can access that says how many items are in it. So this is gonna to have to be a derived value. So let's go to the homepage because that is where the header is, isn't it? No, it's not, sorry. It's in the app page or the app component. So this is the header right here and we have the cart right here. So I want to show just here in parentheses, how many products we have in the cart. So to do that, we're gonna to have to use the cart context because we need access to all the items inside it. So let's do that. We'll say const items is equal to use cart context. Hit enter to import that right here. So now we have the items. Now we need to create the derived value, which is a function. So we say const and we'll call it quantity. We set that equal to a function and inside here we just return a value now that's just going to be one number now in order to work this out we have to cycle through each item in this array tot up how many we have in total using that quantity property and then just return a single number so what i'm going to do is paste something in right here and then explain it so we're returning a value and we're taking the items and we're using the reduce method on it so the reduce method basically just cycles through an array looks at all of the different values in that array and we can reduce everything into one single value essentially. Now the value we're reducing to is gonna be a number. So it fires this function right here for each item in the array. The second argument is the accumulator. So this is the value we're reducing to and it starts off at zero. So each time we fire this function, we get access to the current value of the accumulator, but also the current item in the items. So it's gonna start off as the first item, then the second, then the third, and so forth. Now, each time we fire this function, we return a value. And that return value becomes the accumulator for the next iteration. Does that make sense? And then after all iterations, after we've gone through every item in the array, whatever this is, is the value this returns. So we take the current accumulator, which starts off at zero, and then the current product and look at the quantity of that and add them together. So zero plus the quantity of the first product. So that might be two. So then this becomes two for the next iteration. Then we cycle onto the next product and we say this is two now and the current product. So the quantity of the current product, the second one could be four. So we take two and we add four and it becomes six and so forth. So by the end of it, we're gonna have a number and that's the amount of items inside the cart. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Now we can use that down here. So inside curly braces, we can say quantity and invoke it, save that and come over to the browser and we can see we have five items in the cart. Well, we do two plus two plus one is five. And if we go to another product and start adding them, six, seven, eight, let's try something else. Add to cart nine, 10, etc. So this is working. I'm also going to do another derived value inside the cart page, which is going to be the total price. And that's based on all of these items right here. So let's go back to the cart page to do this. We already have access to the items right here. So we just need to make that derived value, which is a function I'm going to call total. 
and we set that equal to an arrow function. Inside here, we need to return the total amount that this is gonna cost. So two times 12 plus two times 21 plus 21, etc. So what I'm gonna do again is just paste something in and we're using the reduce function again on the items to cycle through them. And this time we're taking the accumulator and we're adding this thing each time around. So the product quantity times the product price. So in this case, it would be two times 12. And then we add that to two times 21. And then we add all that to one times 21, et cetera, until we've done them all. And then we have a figure for the total amount. So now we can output that right down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna copy this from my repo because there's lots of Tailwind classes in it. So we have a paragraph tag with some margin, padding, border, and font bold applied to it. And we say the total cart price is the total right here. And then a pound sign just before that. So this grabs this value here. And remember, the whole idea of these derived values is that they update whenever the items change. So it's always gonna be a fresh value. So let's save this and try it out. And we can see the total cart price right here, 147. Let's add something. Let's take a look at this. It's 12. So it should become 159. Yep, and it does. Awesome. So that, my friends, is derived values.